Um, and welcome back to the House Human Services Committee from our brief break. And um, we're now going to um, sort of talk about uh, where we are with S74, or if we have uh, questions for legislative council. Um, and uh, two of our members will come up as soon as they can, or we will, or we will call them. Two of our members are uh, in another committee uh, reporting on our actions on uh, the reach up bill um, that the Senate is taking up. And uh, so they'll be here back as soon as they can. Um, but so first I wanna ask if there are any questions for legislative council in terms of what words mean or um, in terms of concepts? Yes. Um, I, the one question I had in my head was um, the addition of the um, definition for healthcare services and sort of the, the relevance of that or like maybe why that wasn't there before or why it's particularly important now. And could you draw our attention to, oh, yeah. Uh, it is right on page one. It's the first thing, section one. Yes. Jennifer Kirby, Legislative Council, again, for the record. Um, yes, this is actually a pretty easy one for me um, because it is defined, the definition is added as a new subdivision 11 there in the list because the term, new term, excuse me, defined term telemedicine in the next provision says it's the delivery of healthcare services. Okay. So then it's I see. A definition That's referred to something, right? Okay. Right. And this is the same definition that is in other uh, healthcare bills. The definition of healthcare, healthcare services. services. It's a fairly yes. I took it from I don't remember specifically which statute, but it's a fairly standard one that we've used in many other statutes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Carl. Thank you. Uh, does it address, I, I can't think of where it was in the bill, but does, does it address who can pick up the medication? Because I know one thing, this document that I just looked up, it talks about there's only, and then somebody indicated there's only one pharmacy in the state of Vermont that well, dispenses this. So right. would the, the, the patient themselves have to go pick up that medication or no. can somebody else pick it up? Let me just rant as if you know it's is addressed in the underlying. Yes. So you can't see it in the bill, but it is. Yes, so um, in the long list, I don't think you can see it in the bill, in the long list of the requirements for prescription and documentation that you can see um, much of you, so you can see some of it in the bill. Um, so if you look on, it's not going to help you entirely, but if you look on page three, you can see that there's um, one of the one of the items on the list is that the physician either dispensed the medication directly, and then it's to, to you know to the patient, um, or and then you can't see what is an existing law, but it's with the patient's written consent, contacted a pharmacist and informed the pharmacist of the prescription and delivered the, um, the written prescription personally or by mail or facsimile to the pharmacist, and then who dispensed the medication to the patient, the physician, or an expressly identified agent of the patient. Okay. So that's the piece Thank that you. says. And so I, I just thought it was pertinent patient. because a lot of what we talked about here is trying to put in telemedicine, which would help the patient not having to go right. long distance. So I was just curious if they would have to- Right, you were concerned if they had to travel to that one pharmacy personally, um, no, an expressly identified agent can pick it up. Okay. And I, I do recall, we're just having a discussion. Right? We're just having okay. a discussion. Um, I do recall the um, uh, the pharmacy um, testimony saying they actually drove it to, um, right, drove it to yeah. the uh, patient. Um, and that seems even more relevant to me given the fact that there's only one pharmacy in Vermont that does that. So. Um, I, I was struck by the fact that the pharmacist was willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, may I just, yeah, absolutely. I'm discussion. in a concern of mine. I mean, there are other reasons I'm not for this, yeah, I, I gather, I, but, you know, looking at uh, other issues, I, I was concerned about the fact of the relationship of the 
initial doctor to the examination and the rest of the procedures. I have some, you know, again, I'd probably be against it anyway, but I'm just pointing that out that I think that is an issue that it seems like there should be a very strong relationship between the prescribing physician and the uh, and the patient. And the telemedicine aspect sort of separates that a little bit, it appears like to me. So. You know, um, you make a good point and I can understand that. And um, in the last two years with, with, with COVID, and I am not, I have to rely on Topper and others and Taylor. Um, I, I am not very facile with um, computers and things like that. And as a person living we, we alone, share that. Okay. <laughs> and as a person living alone in the last two years, I um, was able to maintain contact with friends and actually have formed some closer relationships with people based on um, communicating through Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, um, and I think that is somewhat um, what happens with telemedicine is that people have figured out a way how to um, communicate. And, uh, yeah, I, and, I, and I'm not trying to persuade you at all, no. but my guess is if you're going to be working with someone to say, this is a decision that I have made and uh, around uh, um, my own decisions around end of life and having a life-threatening terminal condition. My guess is that's a relationship that can be formed more stronger and more quicker based on the topic um, that, the, that the people get. get um, I, I wanna say like this committee gets, um, gets closer, not just um, because we're here all the time, but sometimes when we're doing issues that we all are involved with, and you know, but I hear what you're saying, and I. I, I think it's a, the term might be degrees of separation. Okay, in other words, people talk about me for separating the the process from that intimate relationship. Well, I say, but I mean between the doctor and the patient. Okay, or you could. It doesn't. Obviously, it could be a telemedicine call with the, with the doctor you're working with, but, but it just, it sort of enters a, a degree of separation. You know, I, um, I hear that, and I hope my doctor doesn't um, hear this, but um, my primary care physician, probably eight years ago, I walked in, you know, and you have to fill out all these stupid forms, sorry, every time you go um, for your, and um I was in a bad mood. We all know I'm never in a bad mood. Um, and so I wasn't filling it out. And I came and I'm sitting in my office in his office. He comes in and he goes, Hi, nice to meet you. And then he says, Why didn't you fill out the forms? And I said, What did you just say when you walked in the room? And he said, Hi, nice to meet you. And I said, I've been your patient for five years. <laughs> and he didn't know that because the first thing that was on his sheet was I'd been seen by someone else. Mm. So even though this person had been my physician for a long time, we did not have. Mm. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm not yeah. sure face-to-face -face mm. does it either. Yeah. Um, it's just interesting because it's just popped into, into my head as um, you know, you folks are having that discussion in it brought me back to, I mean, we, we all have personal experiences that we reflect on, especially in legislation like this. And yeah. um, I remember um, my mother who had cancer and in the, um, what they at the hospital call the comfort room where you're essentially not going home and they're trying to make you as comfortable as possible and make your family as comfortable as possible. And her oncologist, who she had been with for many years, um, and who had seen her through a remission, and then the recurrence 14 years later, which was like one of his, he was quite surprised that she had a recurrence so long after her remission. And 
tried everything that he could because my mother was one of those people just wanted to live forever as long as she could and um and uh an acute event ended up her in the emergency room and she ended up unconscious and i remember um the fact that the doctor that she had had this and intimate is not a it's not a bad word i mean it's a very close relationship um uh and she thought the world of this doctor and he of her he couldn't come into her room in her last days he he stood at the door and he couldn't make an assessment mm. and i don't know if it was because you know they had such a long relationship or what but oh. i was grateful at the time for the palliative care physician who was on staff mm -hmm. um and and she died naturally um but i i guess i'm just offering that i think when, when i heard dr barnard's testimony and the experiences that she has had and the insights that she's had into this and um her experiences with patients um, and knowing that there are not, it's not your everyday physician who's going to take this on because it, it involves a lot of different stuff. Um, this, it doesn't bother me. I thought, I thought maybe originally it was going to, um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me, um, because I feel like they have developed the kind of relationship and knowledge to be able to make that assessment um, um, very carefully. And I, I think, you know, thinking back to, you know, people who have physicians who have a close relationship with a patient, it's sometimes difficult actually for them to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and even though they might, in fact, tell you what your options are, but they're not able to do it. And, um, and they're not required to. And they're not required to. And I think that that is, I think that that is fine. Um, I just, I, I don't have the concerns about the telemedicine thing that I thought I would, I would, you know, um, after listening to all the testimony. I, I appreciate, I appreciate Carl, your, your thoughts on that though. And I appreciate your voicing that. I really do. Well, as you know, I mean, are we talking about why we're for or against this bill? Right. Yeah, I mean, we're right. Or bringing up questions. Okay. Um, so I mean, obviously, yeah. the underlying reason I'm against this or the initial legislation is my belief in in God and that He created life. He gave us life as a gift, and it's not in our jurisdiction to take that life. I mean, that's really it. Okay. So, and even though I mean, your testimony was extremely. Uh, moving, uh, I, I still can't think that it was, uh, in, for me, okay, for me, I, I couldn't say that as a right decision. So, uh, so I mean, I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm probably going to vote against this as a result, even if some of my other issues were, were more uh, mundane in nature. Yeah, this, yeah. Right? And, and, and Carl, this is never. This is not a. Um, this is not an issue or a vote that I would be saying. Carl, can we go outside and can we talk? And, um, is there something that you know? And if you know, would you do this for me? Or you know, um, no, I know. you know, I, 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 I haven't put any pressure on you. Okay. Yeah. No. Right. <laughs> I mean, know how much of control I have in this <laughs> committee. <anyway. laughs> so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, we're just having an open discussion. Um, and also, uh, legislative council is, is at the witness um, chair in case we have any questions in terms of what's in the language. Um, we're not, um, I, I've not heard anyone propose any changes um, to the um, language. Um, and uh, um, I don't know whether we have, if there's other things that um, people want to say at this point in time.
You know how, I mean, I sort of cried my way through it, but how supportive I am of this for so many reasons, because I just believe that um, I've seen it the other way and uh, it felt really unfair and wrong. And I wanted to help my mother and I couldn't. And she suffered with her illness for five years. And then the last month was terrible. Um, and I also thought a lot, I know that this is a little bit different, but I thought about um, Representative McFong's question about um, making sure that someone's a Vermonter. And I get that. And I think we've put a good, you know, having the physician be able to say that. But I also think about my children who maybe move away for a couple of years. And when they become sick, they probably would come home and want to be taken care of in my living room and in with the physicians that they grew up with and that they so I I guess I don't know you can understand where I'm going on that but uh Vermont is their home and they would want to be here so I I just don't understand why we're we would worry about that in any way but it's a hundred and 16 people, you know, yeah, it's a tiny um, number. since 19, since 2013. Um, so this doesn't impact, it probably impacts more people than that, than who actually use it based on it's something for people to think about. Um, but for those small number of people in comparison to the population of the state, I think the impact is profound. And um, um, it is not something that is forced upon anyone else. And so for those that it is important to have that um, that control, that choice at the end of how, of how they will leave this world when they have a life-threatening terminal illness, for me, this is important. Um, Representative McFawn and then um, Representative Small. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Jessica, the reason I brought up the Vermont residency is because it's part of the act. You have to be a Vermont resident. That's why I brought it up. And I felt that the way uh, having a doctor determine that, I didn't think, uh, I, I think that's pretty loose. Okay. That's why I brought it up. I didn't bring it up. To, that it's an impediment to, to, to people who want to use this. I brought it up to see if there was any way we could clarify that so um, that could be taken care of in a different way. Mm -hmm. it, it's part of the law. They have to be a resident. And that's why I brought it up. Thank you, yes. Um, I, I might add now that I have the floor, I might add um, that um, if, if an individual uh, wants to know about this, uh, the doctor must tell them or figure out a way to get the information to them. And I think uh, it's important um, that we understand that a person in this situ situation has the right to understand all options. And I, I, lastly, I, I, lastly, I would like to say that I have been involved personally, personally in the room with individuals that are dying. And I have personally provided relief to those people, working with a hospice person. So I know that you can make somebody comfortable. What, what tears my heart apart is someone with uh, Lou Gehrig's disease that is not able to take this unless they do it early. And um, it, this, is a, this is a tough one for me. One way or the other. I know you can make people comfortable because I've done it personally. <clears throat> and I'm, I know this 
helps people too. So I guess I'm just gonna keep quiet and then make up my mind what I'm doing. Thank you. Thank you, Topper. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair. I think uh, what is highlighted most for me through this bill is just what we've seen about telemedicine and the importance, especially during this pandemic and access here in the state of Vermont. Um, and recognizing the significant barriers, especially for someone at, at end of life with the, the time constraints of, of six months uh, with a, a critical diagnosis, I think it is uh, so important when we're talking about access to recognize the barriers that we hear about so often here in the state, whether it's transportation, um, the stories that we've heard from folks about being able to get their loved ones into the car to be able to show up in person for these appointments, I think, um, I'm very much in support of this bill and very grateful that we have this offering here in the state of Vermont. Um, I wish it was there for uh, my own grandfather who passed away from Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, it was a really hard time. It was not comfortable for the family. It was not comfortable for him. And uh, yeah, I'm very uh, proud of the work that has been done here to update this and, and thankful for folks who came before us to do this work. Can I make a motion that we support H, I mean, S? I forgot the number. 74. 74. 74. 74. I would like to make a motion. Um, there's a motion on the table that we um, support S74. Is there a second? I will second, Madam Chair. There is a second um, by Representative Small. Is there um, further discussion? Yes. Not to. Is there um, a change in the agenda where this family member tomorrow is not coming? Correct. They're not, okay. Because Corre uh, right. it, um, it, it turns out that um, uh, that family, um, it turns out the circumstances of that family member were not the same circumstances okay. under discussion right now. And okay. um, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Because I didn't want to come. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. Thank you for clarifying mm -hmm. that. Um, I just want to really say I really appreciate all the witnesses that we've heard from. This is my first experience with this. And I remember when it was initially passed, I was um, happy and supportive of something like this available to Vermonters. And I really appreciate the work that's been done to update the legislature and to make it more accessible for people. Thank you. The clerk shall begin to call the roll. Uh, Representative McFawn. We can't hear you, Topper. Yes. Representative Wood. Yes. Representative Small. Yes. Representative Rosenquist. No. Representative Garfano? Yes. Representative Whitman? Yes. Representative Paella? Yes. Representative Gregoire? Yes. Representative Noyes? Yes. Representative Brumstead? Yes. Representative Pugh? Yes. On a vote of 10 1 0, passes. Um, thank you, committee, very much. Um, we will be um, reporting this on the floor. Um, I will be the reporter um, of the bill. Um, we will be reporting this next week um, on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and uh, this has been a, a big morning, um, well, a, an emotional morning. Um, and uh, I would uh, say that this ends our committee meeting this morning and we will come back at uh, 115. Um, let me ask, will your event be over by 115? <laughs> Not my event. So I, don't know. <laughs> I, I would expect. Yes. Okay. I don't, okay. Yeah. Um, and um, at 115, um, we'll ask for some feedback, um, some updates in terms of how it went, in terms of the presentation um, of uh, the reach up bill um, below and where we. Um, 
<clears throat> we've been trying whether or not we've been able to get some witnesses for some um, other bills before us. 